identities for cosine and sine. How do we do it? By this formula here, that e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. And again, that's an E. So that's Euler's formula. We're going to use that uh, in a couple of regards. First, we're going to start with this formula and say, look, we're going to let theta equal A plus B. Theta is an angle. I can add two things together to get it. That's fine. So let's write that out. Uh, I have E to the I. Okay, instead of theta, I'm writing A plus B equals cosine instead of theta, a plus b plus i sine a plus b. All right. And we're going to just set that over the side. Maybe we'll put, I don't know, a squiggly or something by it. That's something we're going to use in a little bit. Now I'm going to start with this part of it and expand it out. Look, e to the i a plus b if we distribute that i, it's e to the i a plus i b. Exponent rules tell us that this is the same thing as e to the i a times e to the i b. And now, I'm going to do a little bit more scratch work. And I'm going to try to see what e to the i a and e to the i b is. Okay, so look, I have two things being multiplied. I have a formula that tells me what e to the i times something is. So I'm going to plug a in for theta and b in for theta. So let's do that. So e to the i theta is cosine a plus i sine a. e to the i b is cosine b plus i sine b. And now we were over here, so let's write that again, e to the i a times e to the i b. And now we know what e to the i a is. So instead of writing this, instead of writing this, I'm going to write this stuff. So cosine a plus i sine a. And instead of writing this stuff, I'm going to write that stuff. Cosine b plus i sine b. And at this point, what you should do is like the box. So throw these guys in a box. Or follow along. Cosine a times cosine b is equal to cosine a cosine b. Cosine a times i sine b is the same thing as saying cosine a sine b, cos a sine b. Can't forget that i in the front. Plus these two terms being multiplied together. So this one and this one. That would be i sine a cosine b. And then the last thing to do is to add the last two terms, which is and I'm going to do it this way this time, i times i, i squared, and then sine a, sine b. Now, to do this part, this i squared stuff, look, I have to remember that i squared is the same thing as saying i squared, and i squared is square root of negative 1. So i squared is a negative 1. That's it. So I'm going to write this stuff again. Just like it, cosine a, cos b, plus i cos a, sine b, plus i sine a, cos b. But now we know that i squared is a negative 1, so minus sine a, sine b. Now I'm going to rearrange the terms, right? Like I've got some real stuff, and then I've got some imaginary stuff. Let's just write the real stuff next to each other, cos a, cos b minus sine a, sine b, plus i cos a, sine b, 
right? This stuff now. Uh, plus I sine A cosine B. Now, something that I was alluding to in class is that you can only have real solutions on a real coordinate system or complex solutions in a complex coordinate system, meaning that this stuff, right, it has no imaginary numbers. This can only ever relate to real things, like, and that's that weird R, right? That's what I mean by real. Uh, whereas this stuff can relate to imaginary numbers or big C, complex numbers. Now, earlier we have this little squiggly thing here, right? That was the first time that we did it. We just plugged in A plus B. And so we found out that the real part is cosine A plus B and the imaginary part is sine A plus B. So... What happened is we use this formula, this formula, to give us two results. So whatever this equals, which it equals this, so this thing equals this, and this thing, look, equals all of this stuff. Which means that if this equals this, and this equals that, then this equals that. It's like saying that that piece, this piece right here is A, and this piece is B, and this piece is C. And the rule would be, right, if A equals B and A equals C, right, A equals B and A equals C, then B equals C. So that's the rule of logic we're applying. That's what's happening. So let's apply it. In other words, I can set my real parts. So here's my real part. Cosine of A plus B is equal to, this stuff is equal to the real part of this. So cos A, cos B, minus sine A, sine B. That's my first formula, and I'm done. I do nothing else with the cosine. I proved it. Proved this piece. Still got to prove the second piece. So let's set this stuff equal to the rest. So I have sine I sine of A plus B equals right I sine of A plus B I sine of A plus B equals our leftover stuff. What's the leftover stuff? Uh, all this stuff right here with the i's in it. So equals i cosine a sine b plus i sine a cosine b. Now, we're going to do GCF. What do these guys have in common? Just one thing, right? They have the i in common. So I'm going to factor that out. So it's everything's the same except I factored out the i. And now that it looks like this, it's a little bit more clear. These both, both sides have what in common? Yep, just some number. It's a weird number, it's imaginary, but it's still a number. So I can divide that number out, and that's okay. And I get now my second formula, that sine, right, the stuff that's left, sine of A plus B equals cosine A sine B plus sine A cosine b. And now I'm done. How did I know it was done? Because I got I got this result. That's how I knew I was done here.